On today's part of my take, we have our friend Ross Tucker back to talk about the NFL draft. We also have the QB Ninja guru. He's just he's a guru. It's Jordan Palmer. He's been training Sam Darnold and Josh Allen, so he can talk to us about both those guys and what we expect on Thursday night and for their careers. We also have NBA playoffs, hot seat, cool throne. And guys on chicks. Before we get to all of that, though, award-winning listeners, you know we're switching to the Cash App. The Cash App is the simplest way to pay people back. Friends, families, coworkers, anyone really sending and receiving money is totally free and fast, and most payments can be deposited directly to your bank account in just a few seconds. The Cash App lets you do way more than that. Now you can even buy and sell Bitcoin instantly. Get your paycheck deposited right to the app. Pull money out of the ATM with their free custom cash card or use it to spend anywhere you like you really won't find a more useful app for your cash out there so make the switch today and download the free cash app for ios or android now and when you sign up enter the reward code barstool you get five dollars and five dollars goes to aspca save some dogs maybe some kittens but there's more we're giving away some cheddar some guacamole every time you use venmo you kill a puppy yeah that yeah 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 do the math. I don't know if you say that, but yeah, for sure. I, well, we said it, mm-hmm. so it's, it's been true. said, and we're not cutting it. Uh, the Cash App, download the app and tweet your cash tag to at part of my take, and we will reward a lucky award-winning listener with cash every episode. Hank, who'd we give it to last episode? Uh, S. S. Fasnacht. Okay, so there you go. Put a picture of their dog. It was really a nice. No so dog save Abby. the dog and save the dog. Mm-hmm. So uh, download the Cash App. You get five dollars when you put in promo code Barstool. You get five dollars to save a dog or a kitten. And if you tweet us your cash tag at Pardon My Take, we'll give you some free money. Maybe. Let's go. Bye! Welcome to Part in My Take, presented by SeatGeek. Today is Wednesday, April 25th, and guys, we did it. We freed Meek Mill. Yes! I'm so relieved. I was so relieved when he got it. Credit to us. What's Meek Mill? Is he a singer? Uh, He's a rapper. From Philadelphia, South Philadelphia, I okay. believe, uh, and he has been freed. I'm so glad that we did it. So guys. It, we it, started this trend. We did like a month ago. Mm-hmm. We you no, know, it was right around the Super Bowl. Yeah, we were into it. So we freed Meek. We freed Meek Mill. Uh, I don't want to pat myself on the back, but I'd say that we did. We we were the ones who freed him, mm-hmm. uh, and he showed up to the Sixers game. I have to ask you guys a question: Is has there ever been a better get out of jail? first like three hours than getting a helicopter from jail to the Sixers game. I saw an Instagram video that Kevin Hart put up. Kevin Hart was making fun of him for being fat, which mm-hmm. was you're short, Kevin. Mm-hmm. Like you well, can't really make you fun know, of fat people when you're that's that short. Kind of what we do. That's yeah, like half of our podcast yeah, yeah. is me so, saying that to you. Yeah. But uh so Meek then was sitting in the locker room. He got to talk to the team. He got a fresh haircut. He got some a new jersey and then he got to ring the bell and sit courtside for the Sixers heat game yeah it's a pretty great way to do it. I would take things a little bit differently if I got out of jail the last thing I would want to do is like go out in public I would want to go I would you could go tell to McDonald's. his face he was a little weirded out yeah. by like the crowd like oh yeah. I haven't heard these noises in a long time yeah and the, you, you put it like a, a hammer in his hand and tell him to get to where it's like no yeah no, thank you I'm not on the chain gang anymore yeah I would want to get out of jail and I would go to McDonald's I would get some double cheeseburgers and then I would take a nap mm-hmm. I'd probably jack off yeah, let's be honest. They they should have given Meek Mill like one Although of those. That, I think that's isolation. all you can do in jail. But it's not the same. Eh. It's not the same. You're always looking over I your shoulder. You wait. So you would get out of jail, eat some shitty food, and jerk off, yep. which is basically all you do in jail. jail and nap. Yeah, you didn't let me finish. I yeah. would also I would take nap. a nap. Yeah, so yeah. Okay. All things that you can't do when you're in prison. Yes. I got a question for you guys. Yeah. yeah. You guys consider yourself PR guys. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. 
if let's say you're you're what does P- that mean P- like we consider ourselves we are pr, PR yeah, guys we're PR, P- pr okay let's say you had a client let's say this client had a high profile beef where he basically got murdered off the internet i was gonna ask you that question he comes to you and he says what can i possibly do to wipe away the fact that i got, literally got murdered worse than anyone's probably got murdered in the last 10 years in terms of rap beef what can i do go to prison what would you say go to prison okay Go to prison and stay in prison because I just learned this, Hank, that I, I, I actually wrote this down to ask Hank, is it true Drake murdered Meek Mill? Yes. So why isn't okay. Drake in jail? Why well, aren't the Raptors saying free Drake? But this is a good point by Hank because I wouldn't have looked that up if I was still sitting here trying to free Meek Mill tirelessly every night, every mm-hmm. day, every waking hour. Spending my time trying to free Meek Mill. Now he's free, and I'm like, "Is this true? He got murdered by Drake? What if Drake, or what if Meek Mill just gets out of prison and he goes on like a, a killing spree? Okay, and everybody so, that tried to get okay. him out of jail, like, what if he just goes around terror? What if he becomes that'd a be Joker? Bad. Okay, what if, be he, bad. what if he becomes a Joker and he like blows up a hospital? Um, as long as the Eagles will probably win another. Super as long yeah. as it's lyrically, he'll be great. Yeah. So, so he's. He how did he get murdered by Drake? They had a they had a rap beef going back and forth. They wrote diss songs and Drake's back to back. Oh fuck, that's about that Meek was, Mill. Yeah, damn. Yeah, you got to stay in jail if you're Meek Mill. Yeah, that was a really dumb move for him to. Maybe you know, that's why he was no, looking no. awkward. What do you mean? But he came out as a hero. No, but and he, now that when no. he drops new music, people are gonna go crazy. No, because now like when he comes out of jail, people are now asking you know i already who, forgot about meek it mill oh he got murdered i already Drake. forgot about it so i think this is great pr for for meek mill i think he's totally like everyone's yes. forgotten about yeah, but he's that. gonna stay in now jail. he's a hero you know what the celtics need to do they need no. to get everlast out of jail yeah I, is he in jail or no dropkick murphy's yeah get break king casey out of jail get murphy out yeah yeah uh by the way that celtics bucks game big 10 basketball's back whoa that was horrendous but it was entertaining in a horrendous way. Yeah, but it was still like that whole. <laughs> it was entertaining in the way that the whole series has been kind of weird. Yeah, and so it's just a continuation of a lot of weirdness. Well, it's. I mean, when you, it's basically the per. It's like the unstoppable force versus the immovable object. You take the best player in the series and have an accountant coach him versus the best coach in maybe the league with a team that's ravaged by injuries, and you uh-huh. get this. Well, Marcus Smart is back. <laughs> He, he, he was hilarious. Is, Hank, is he always, he's always hilarious? Is he always this funny mm-hmm. to watch? Yes. He is he, the funniest player. He he's, plays he, he's like with, a Three Stooges routine on, on the court. Well, he plays, he's like a beefier J.R. Smith who without as good of a shot. Because yeah, he plays much, with just like, he plays with defense. so much confidence and craziness, and it's great to watch. He, By yeah, the way, he does play much better. He really sells it when he well, gets fouled. J.R. Smith, Smith, when he wants to try on defense, he's actually okay at defense. He just. That's maybe why would you ever two try minutes out of every three weeks. That's player. It's player hating to try to stop another man from scoring. Yeah, true. Yeah, just let let somebody get there. Let them now, get their buckets. Now, um, I do want to say the Bucks got hosed. David Stern's at it again. Mm-hmm. Um, that shot by Al Horford was very clearly after the shot clock went off. As a person that had the Bucks pl- uh, <laughs> plus four say, and a half, you're now talking about a shot that happened with like two and a half minutes. But left. still, it was a, it was a momentum play. <laughs> There's no denying it because after that, Marcus Smack comes in, falls down, throws the ball to Horford, who does one of those dunks like you see in high school warmups when you're not allowed to touch the rim. Mm-hmm. You just take your hands away from it. Uh, it that was a momentum shifting play for sure. And if it wasn't for that, it, what I'm getting. At is that David Stern owes me 500 bucks. This series has seven games written all over it, and the seventh game is going to be 72 to 68. <laughs> Winner. Yep. Uh, the other the other NBA news we have to talk about. I've canceled Russell Westbrook. He's canceled. He's done. I'm I I white girl can't even he, with him anymore. He got murdered by Mitt Romney, dude. You know how okay, you know how yeah. lame you have to be to get owned by Mitt Romney. I mean, and Mitt Romney owned him. Yes, he 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 showed him how many fouls he had. Uh-huh. How do you come back from that? Yeah, you it, have four fouls, and this is Mitt Romney in a custom Romney jersey courtside with a button down shirt underneath. Yeah, Mitt Romney was wearing the official uniform of Utah. Yes, the entire set the state. Flag. He just needed a glass of milk in his hand. Yeah, the state flag is just uh, like a button-up Brooks Brothers shirt (laughs) that has an ill-fitting basketball jersey. Oh my God! So Russell Westbrook, do you think Mitt Romney just like? Do you think he like got mad about how cool the Jazz new uniforms are? 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's way too flashy for yeah. him. Way, way, way. Too way. He's, they're going to outlaw that. So. Yeah. That's too many colors. Too much going on. Mm-hmm. Just keep it. Keep it purple and blue and and a shade of white. Yeah. A lot stick, of white. Stick to caffeine. Need a lot of white. Caffeine free Coke and yeah. the white <laughs> yeah, jazz jerseys. The, as the, as that's how we do it crowd. in Utah. That's what we need the jerseys to look like. Um. So Russell Westbrook, I'm done with him. I can't handle him anymore. He said he was going to shut down, shut that shit down with Ricky Rubio, which. When you actually think about it, is a ridiculous quote because Ricky Rubio's terrible shooting shuts himself down mm-hmm. all the time. Russ played like extra angry. He's always angry, but he played beyond angry, got four fouls in the first half, was running around, got a technical. So I'm done with him. I'm done with anyone talking about the Thunder. I said this pre playoffs. I, I called this. I yeah. said they are trash. You said they're trash. And I Don't do not want to hear them. about the Thunder they're trash. being any kind of, like, even close to a competitor. I think Westbrook is jealous of Ricky Rubio because Ricky is the only player in the NBA that looks more Coachella than he does. Yeah. Yeah. He, he I mean, stole his coach swag. Yeah, he did. He did. Co- yeah, Russ Westbrook has probably the best fashion in the game, but mm-hmm. I can't. I, I just. I don't know. I, what, what do even the Thunder do? Because playoff P. I mean, where's he? He's probably not going to stick around. We're like playoff L. <laughs> well, I was nickname. explaining to Hank. And I, I got my brain into like an entire uh, a pretzel when I was trying to explain it to Hank. Remember that mm-hmm. when we were going to lunch, Russell Westbrook's would be best as a second fiddle, but his he will no. never do that, mm-hmm. and he also always needs the ball. And Paul George is also a second fiddle, but he, he needs- is better suited for the playoffs than Russell Westbrook. So he should actually be the alpha, but Russell Westbrook. Is the alpha, even though he shouldn't be, well, and then Melo's it's a good bum thing ass you is got just Mello on there. Faci- he's a yeah. true facilitator, yeah, making sure everybody touches. The I ball. just hope Melo retires after this year no. so that he can rest up for the 2020 Olympics, yeah, and become the best Olympian of all time. Well, Five gold medals. I don't even think he's on the team. No, I know. I, he's not in the pool, is but, he? No, they'll let him. They'll let him on the if team. If he retires? Yeah, come on. They got to let him on the team. He got five I, five gold medals? He'll, you know what they'll do? They'll bring him on as like the last coach, and yeah. he'll have his jersey on underneath that whack ass polo shirt that yes. they make the, the coaches wear in the Olympics. And he'll just, he'll slowly just like cut the sleeves off it until it starts looking like a basketball jersey and then step on the court and just hope nobody notices. Yep. And then uh, let's see. Uh, oh, people clamored for me to talk about because on Monday's show, we didn't talk about the Rockets and the Wolves. And a lot of Wolves fans were saying, you guys got to talk about the Rockets and the Wolves. So here we are. Uh, so you got bukkake in the third quarter on Monday night. Like, straight up shit that you shit you have to go on private mode to watch. You don't want anyone knowing that you're watching that kind of porn when the Rockets drop 50 in the third quarter on you. It was pretty ugly. <laughs> it, was it was very bad. The Rockets almost, so there's us talking about the the Rockets <laughs> almost have me questioning my original take of uh, them being too mentally weak mm. to win it in the West. I think that they... We'll talk about it later. Yeah, we got. We'll, we'll we got, talk we got about it later. To talk about later. Are we going to talk about the the big news? Well, here? Yeah, we're getting into the caps. Okay, the big news. Well, well first we're going to talk about the mock drafts. So mm-hmm. there's mock, yeah, draft mock draft season is still going on. Um, this is mock draft eight point seven. I got deep into mock drafts today. Yeah, too many. I read too many mock drafts. Mm-hmm. Everyone's got a mock draft, and the best is the people who do. I read uh, top twenty picks that or top twenty prospects the Bears could pick with number eight. Okay. So do the math. That's there. a shitload of people. <laughs> yeah, when, yeah. When you have the eighth pick, I want to go. So you have you. You could choose anyone you want, really. I want to go back in time to like the factories of of like the 1890s and explain to them uh, what people are getting paid for labor for yeah. in America these days. Well, you talk about these athletes and you guess which professional teams are going to take them. But then somebody else says, your pretend job interview sucks. Here's my list of 200 guys that's much better. And then that guy gets paid money, too. I want, I want the award-ruling listeners to do something for us. I want someone to find the, the like least read mock draft so we can signal boost it. Mm-hmm. Find us the mock draft that some guy has on his Tumblr or his you know WordPress blog that no one reads. I will, and it needs to be seven rounds. <laughs> And I will. We will problem. signal boost the fuck out of it. Uh huh. We'll, we'll here's a, here's a goal. We're gonna crash somebody's website. Yes. Yes. We're gonna crash I, I a mock most, drafter's website. I want the most relevant traffic. mock draft you could possibly have, and I will read <laughs> yes. the fuck out of it. And I will just. I, and my favorite is when the mock drafts do the trades. Uh huh. Like mock trades trade alert, are pretty good. Trade, yeah. alert, <laughs> trade alert in this mock draft. Yeah. Um, all right. Okay. Let's wait. talk about the caps. Let's talk about them. Yeah. Because You're I fucked. I am confident. <laughs> I am so confident. Right. Hank. Hank we're not are saving you this. this. We're not saving this. Hank. Are you watching this? Um. 
here's here's the deal. Are you looking at them right now? The Washington Capitals, <laughs> they are better this year because they're actually worse than they were last year. Okay, I know they lost to the Penguins in seven, which technically they should have won. The refs obviously in the tank for you know Sidney Crosby and their golden boy and all that shit. Um, but the fact that the Capitals are not as good, they're not as deep, they underperformed in the regular season. It means that they're they're winning ugly. Is what I'm getting at. This they're not shit. They're not really shit okay. pumping teams. Yeah. Uh, I mean, last night yeah. was kind of shit pumping, but they're not. They have to rely on a lot of their grit, a lot of their intangibles, and we've tried being a really good team in the past. That hasn't worked. Yeah. We've tried being by far the best team uh-huh. talent wise. Uh-huh. That hasn't worked. So let's give it a shot, being a little bit shittier than them. Yeah. So that's what I'm going with right now. So I'm gonna probably take this tape and send it into a psychologist or a hospital and be like, "That's what, fine. What is it? Stockholm syndrome? Is it no. just classic, just full on denial? Is it? Is it? Does he have early onset Alzheimer? Like what's well, going yes. on with his brain to think that the Capitals, the Washington Capitals, yeah. will beat the Penguins? Well, I haven't I haven't eaten a, a <laughs> salad in probably eight years, so it's probably a lack of nutrients. I think. I mean, seriously. We, no, no, stop. Just stop. We, Just stop. We are we are stop. bad enough to the point where we can I be don't. underestimated. That's never happened in the past. As your friend, I don't want you to go through this. You need to you need to lay lower than you're laying because I I can just see it. It's all happening again. This is just all happening. This is this is we are in the horror. The penguins are overconfident right now. No. Yeah, have you seen them play? We, we're in the horror they're, film. They're skating around and, like like on their tiptoes. They're doing no. dances that should be in the Olympics for ice skate. They are not playing like a hockey team right now. The Washington Capitals are playing like a hockey. We're team. in an M Night Shyamalan movie, and the dogs start barking, and the crops all are all weird and shit. And Hank and I are saying, "Hey, this is a bad, bad situation." And you're like, "No." It's fine. I hope and then he's standing you're the on his head to die. That's what you got to have. Because you don't realize a, that it's all happening again. We have a again. goaltender who's standing on his head right now. Hank. You, can't, you can't get scored on five hole if you're standing on your head. Hank. Hey, PFT, uh, quick quick trivia for you. <laughs> what do uh, what are the years 1991, 1992, 2009, huh, hey, Hank, 2016, why'd you, why'd you leave out 1994? and 2017 huh. all have in common? Interesting. Why'd you leave out 1994, Hank? Remember 94. It has nothing to do That's with 94. That's what everyone's saying. Oh, my Remember God. Remember 94. The answer is that those are years the Penguins won Stanley Cups and eliminated the Penguins. Yeah. Uh, or, or Capitals. The Capitals. Capitals. Yeah. <sighs> what happened in 94, though? Boy. Did you I look that Might want to Google that one. Boy, oh, boy. Might want to Google 94. Wasn't is that it, the year the, the Rangers? Riots, the riots in L.A.? Is it, well, we didn't win the Stanley Cup, but we beat the Penguins in the playoffs. Yeah. And you know what? I, I've I've flipped my, my mind into uh, the scenario where if, if the Capitals beat the Penguins, that's our Stanley Cup. This is our Stanley Cup. That's good. We might not win the okay. whole thing, but you know what? Okay, if, if, if that's we, what you want to do, then that's fine. If we beat the vile penguins, okay. that's our Stanley Cup. All right, fine. Good. Go All right, uh, you know what? Can we cash our ticket? Will you pay out our ticket? No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> okay, then you can't do it. Yeah. If you will pay out our ticket, then we will we will yeah. agree that the Capitals won the Stanley Cup penguins and they beat the Penguins. Dumb fucking animal. Penguins can't even fly. Have you ever seen a pay penguin? Out our ticket. Have you ever seen a pay penguin try ticket. to walk on ice? It can't even it's walk. Cute as why, fuck. why would you name Dude, March the Why would you Come name on. your ice skating team after an animal that can't walk on ice? Why would you name I don't even know what a capital is. Yeah. It's a building. Well, it's, it's a, a lot of things. Hank. It's, it's a building. Yeah, and it's they also, name their team after a building. It's also the head of the state. Yeah, that you're in. It's a building. So it's also you're, a building. A building's going to beat a, a penguin. Yeah, dude. A building bird, doesn't move. Birds fly into windows all the time. Why do they call it buildings if you've already built if it? If they're already built. Yeah, that's that's someone sent that to me the other day. Yeah. That one fucked my mind. That was uh, Paul. You're Poundstone. getting triggered right Paul now. Poundstone you're getting a little triggered. Back, you know when she said that was yeah. that joke okay, is from 1994 triggered. when the yeah. Capitals okay. beat the Penguins. So you're officially triggered. Yeah, mm. okay. I'm, not, I can no, tell. I'm not mad. Yeah, I can tell. Why are you mad? I, no, we're just trying to save you from I'm, yourself. I'm passionate. Yeesh. Yeah. I am passionate right now. Oh, okay. God dang! I, I sense some doubt from you guys. You actually think that the Penguins are going to win this? Yes. In how many games? I don't know. However many that it takes to fully break your heart. Yeah, so seven. Yeah, whatever so that, it is. That's a but possibility. But no, it could also go. It could also go. Uh, you know, Capitals up 2-0, mm-hmm. and then the Penguins win the next four. That also would work. Here's the thing: <laughs> as long as we don't have too many of those afternoon games, Ovi can't. Ovi can't show up in those afternoon games. That's uh, it's a lot to ask for a Russian guy to get out of bed before two p.m. Oh man, this is gonna be bad. Are you gonna do soggy sorrows? I will do soggy sorrows. Okay. You need to like but no, you actually, need to jump in the East River I'm when not, you do Soggy Stars. I'm not going to do Soggy Stars because they're not going to lose. Okay. All right. Let's Are do- you going to do Soggy Stars when they win? What? 
Oh, yeah, I guess you guys are no, kind of no, Cavs yeah, we're fans. Cavs fans. We have but a fucking you, ticket. You don't to, sound to like a Cavs fan. We have, we no, have more riding on this real, than you do. We're hardened Cavs fans that know to not expect us to win. We're Could all in this together. Yeah. We're just trying to get you ready. Yeah. You guys are this trying to just mental break warfare. me down. You know what? I'm, you know, we're getting you ready. We're sharpening your brain. Yeah. Well, I'm confident. My brain is super sharp. Okay. Great. My brain's like a knife right so now. So do you want to thank us for doing that for you? Thank you for sharpening my brain. <laughs> it's even no problem. It's even stronger than before. Yes, do you want to no apologize problem. for getting mad? Yeah. You did get mad. No, I'm not mad. You got a little mad. I'm, not, I'm never going to apologize for getting mad because uh, having emotion is what men do. Okay. Uh, let's go to hot seat. Real cool men throne. don't cry. We just scream. Hank, why don't you start? Uh, my hot seat is Don LaGreca and the rest of the New York radio hosts because mm-hmm. Mike Francesa is coming back. The Pope. The Pope. Kings stay kings. Yeah. So, so I don't. there's a lot of drama behind this whole thing, like classic radio wars, but the gist of it is that Francesa's coming back and Don LaGreca, who's one of his competitors, released a video where he was talking about how he's not worried. Not worried. Whatsoever. Yeah, it's kind of like <laughs> PFT saying he's not worried that's about what you the do. Penguins. That's yeah. what you do. You hold a press conference to announce that you're not gay mm-hmm. and you, you shoot a video to announce that you're not afraid of the guy that's coming back to keep and, the video, he just held his hand out yeah, straight to show that he wasn't shaking or worried about it at all. Doesn't doesn't move, and like, he's like shaking a little. It's like he's Tom a, Hanks, but he's yeah, like an Tom old Hanks guy. So he's like, Ryan. he's yeah. a little shaky. But yeah. uh, what a power move by Francesa! Mm-hmm. I, you, th- I I'm sure there will be people. I I don't listen to Francesa. I know about him, um, but there are probably people who hate it. And I I know it kind of sucks for Bart Scott and his co-hosts who took over the Francesa spot and now get fired. Right. But being able to leave and then like negotiate a, a, a higher salary because the team, like the yeah, radio a, station took sucked. A pay cut. Did he? Yeah. He did. There's like drama between. But he's coming back to say, he's a savior. He's Dan Gilberting the whole situation. He, he sold Quicken Loans and then Quicken Loans sucked. And then he got he bought it back and was like, I'll save this this sinking ship. That's this what is like Francis the entire premise of that show, Billions, yeah. on Showtime. I don't watch it. Showtime. But yeah. Sure, yeah. it is. He's just coming back to save what he created, right? And that he loves Steve Jobs. so very deeply. Yeah, yeah. Steve Jobs, that's a good one. Um, he did J- it. Jay Leno. Yeah, on the Tonight Show. Jay Leno. Yeah. Hey, Conan, get your ass out of the building. The chin's back. Yeah, right. It's like the the ultimate sign of power is to be able to f- retire, have everyone suck your dick on air for like three months straight, God, then great. take four months off, and then come back and be like, I'm saving this whole thing. You know what this whole thing makes me want to do is fake my own death. Yeah, like let's. I haven't had a good fake death hit the the national media in a while. I would like to fake my own death just so I could see like people say all the hopefully some nice things about me. Mm-hmm. Uh, besides me being delusional and having brain worms. Wait what, till what are the other wait, things you're saying. Wait till uh, the Penguins beat the Capitals and you can fake your death. Oh God, yeah, that's a perfect. I should time. do that. I should perfect do that. Fake time. time death. Yes, Get a lot of sympathy time. points. Yeah, I will uh, cry if they lose. I will too. I'm gonna. I, I can already tell. Like I, just thinking about them losing makes me want to cry. My cool throne are the New England Patriots. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Everyone was Good. freaking out that right. uh, we Brady and Gronk weren't going to come back, but lo and behold, they stunned the world. They both, or Gronk at least, announced on Instagram that he talked to Belichick and he will Do be back. Do you think maybe that was just an inadvertent Instagram post like KD's? No. Maybe he just sat on his phone and Gronk is out. not a Gronk's not a phone guy. He's not a he's not on social media unless he like has to be. Yeah. No. Someone else runs that for him yeah. for sure. Absolutely. But. uh yeah, I mean, we all expected it, right? No, I mean, you guys were the ones no, that were like, no, are, are no, you worried? no, panic no, button. No, all we said was it seemed a little different. Yeah, and it has to when 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 two of your your two best players have to make announcements that they're going to keep playing football. That seems different. Yeah, has this ever happened in the past, Hank? Where Tom Brady and Gronk have the same press season, conferences to have, say they're playing have football? like gone train somewhere else and everyone's like wow are they coming back and Gronk has been like oh I don't know has that happened no okay well it happened yeah. this year yeah so things are a little so bit it different. Is different fact different won't be different on Sunday when they're on the field Belichick's okay. definitely gonna trade Gronk now <laughs> this is the ultimate Belichick move <laughs> once he commits to coming <laughs> yeah, back Gronk's yeah. like I'm fully committed to the team mm-hmm. and then I can't boom, wait to play football you're out. <laughs> yeah you're yeah. gone well good because you're a Seahawk yeah you you blinked Gronk yeah you're out. The the best thing ever would be Gronk going to the Green Bay Packers and then Aaron Rodgers continuing not to use his tight end. Yeah, and well, and then they got uh, they got Jimmy Graham. Graham. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's not going to work. No, it's not. That's not going to work. In theory, Jimmy Graham's going to get drafted in like the third round of fantasy football draft. Can we do? A- he's like Andrew. He's like Andre Johnson at the end, where yeah. you just kept on drafting him. And you're like, yeah, this is going to keep working. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not Maybe I'll have like a different color for his hair this year, and that'll inspire yeah. him. I don't know. Uh, what do you got for hot seat, Cool Throne? Uh, my hot seat is Daniel Day Lewis. Okay. So everyone's favorite method actor is firmly on the hot seat 
Because Don't assume he's my favorite method. Because actor. Jared Goff is coming for that ass. Yeah. Jared Goff put out a video uh, in conjunction, I guess, with Red Bull. Of course, it was sponsored by somebody. Um, he went to Ventura College, and he pretended to be a transfer, and they acted like they were doing a documentary about a new transfer quarterback that came in. In reality, Jared Goff just, like, he put on a wig, and he put fake tattoos on his neck. He basically, like, you know how Bugs Bunny used to dress up in a wig, and then... Elmer Fudd would be like, oh, it's a chick bunny. I want to fuck him now. Yeah. Like, that's about the level of, of commitment that Jared Goff put into this dress up. It was very weird that they only put just a wig on him and not, like, makeup or anything. Well, they and, gave him a mole. Well, these videos, at some point, like, you got to know when a random per when coach's like, hey, we're just bringing in a random guy, and oh, this guy can throw 70 yards. Oh, and there's a camera crew with him. <laughs> yeah, what? Okay. Yeah. Cool. But he actually, he fooled everybody because they did a reveal at the end and nobody knew that it was him. They were yeah. all like legitimately surprised. After he took off his wig. Uh, he, he took off Everyone his, was like, wait, well, who's that? Yeah, he took off his wig and the tattoos and they're like, who who are yeah, you? Wait, Jared, wait, huh? am I supposed to be? We love you, Jared. Yeah, we do love You're Jared. You're listening to this right now, so yeah. we had to bust your balls. Yeah, we do love you. And also, uh, way to wet the beak. Get, mm -hmm. that, get, the, get that Red Bull money. Yep. Uh, what's your cool throne? Uh, my cool throne is number one, Gary Bettman. Mm. So Gary is at it again. He scheduled the first round playoff game uh, between the, or the, sorry, the second round playoff game uh, between the uh, Penguins and the Capitals for Thursday night, right up against the NFL draft. Perfect. So this is this is Gary that we're talking about. So he knows how to draw attention um, to any product but his own. Mm -hmm. And th I think it's a little bit more sinister than this. I think this is like a Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Hillary Clinton DNC situation where he doesn't want people tuning into that game, watching how badly the Capitals get jobbed okay. because they're so desirous. That I'm gonna, we're going to cut your mic off series. as you keep saying so this. this. You're is, hurting yourself. No, I'm just this saying. This is all going to be no, used against no, you. No, what I'm doing is saying that he doesn't want people to watch Sidney Crosby get all the blatant calls and have the Washington Capitals get screwed over in a heartbreaking loss. Okay, that's fair. And so he wants his his boy Sidney Crosby get into the next round. That's fair. That's why he's scheduling it up against the NFL that's draft. That's fair. That's okay. fair. Um, my my other one, my other cool throne, is NASA. Again? Again. All right, here's what NASA tweeted out today. Um, Uranus stinks like eggs and sulfur. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty good. It's like your butthole. It's pretty good. I was paraphrasing what they said, but basically the premise of, of the study that NASA released was that Uranus smells bad. Mm. And they just kept saying over and over again, Uranus stinks. Well, it is ass-eating season. It is ass-eating season. Yeah. If you want to get Trump's attention, um, he maybe should have tweeted out, uh, Mercury gives you autism. Yeah. Still studies out there. Yeah, the planet Mercury. Yeah, still studies. Yeah. Uh, is Wait, is Mercury made of Mercury? Yeah. It is. Entirely. So it's just like a really bad sushi. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, that's fun fact. You have to I have know a special. That. I guess that would make prepare. sense. Yeah. Mercury is made from mercury. Mm -hmm. uh, my hot seat is uh, NFL insiders, all of them except Adam Schefter. Okay. So did you see this scoop from Adam Schefter? He said one GM estimated that there is a fifty percent chance that four QBs will go in first five picks Thursday night. I'm doing the Zach Galifianakis numbers in front of my yeah, face yeah. math right now. Would be a big help to top 10 teams not in QB markets. So Adam Schefter's big scoop is that it might happen that four out of the first five picks are QBs. Yeah, but it's also kind of weird that basically if you're picking in the top 10, you don't have a good quarterback. Yeah. So kind of catch 22. Yeah, there. right. And, and also everyone overrates quarterbacks, and we always throw a bunch of them at the top of the draft. Mm -hmm. so, so what he basically means is... This year's the same as last year. Yes. Is yeah, what exactly. Adam Schefter's exactly. tweet was. Yes. Yeah. Quarter, the quarterback is king in the NFL. Yeah. The NFL draft is coming on Thursday. Yes. This is the exact tweet he could have had. All right, my cool throne is your penis. So I'm sure you Finally. guys saw this, but Hopkins uh, Medical, Hopkins Hospital Medicine, they performed the first total penis and scrotum transplant in the world. So, fellas, if you're not feeling your penis, if you'd like a new one, mm -hmm. now you can. You can upgrade. Embrace debate. Is it gay if you get a new penis and then you're just jerking it? Is another dude's dick? Yeah. You, you, you going to be caught jerking another man's dick? Does that count if you have sex? Does that count for the other guys tally no, well it counts for your girlfriend or wife she gets to add that to hers right but you don't get to add it basically well what you're doing is you're cucking yourself right if you get another if you have sex with your wife with another man's penis right you're a pretty big cuck that would be cool if, if it was if, like if you could just 
like almost uh, you you know how you can get one of those watches where you can change the bands. Mm-hmm. So like, oh, it's a snazzy band. Oh, it's an athletic band. Like that would be nice mm-hmm. if you could just shift out your penis. It's like if you go into that Pawn Star show and they take you. They're like, well, you know, I got a guy that's actually a specialist in this sort of thing. He just examines your body. He's like, it's a pretty good body, um, but this dick is aftermarket. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so it's been the used. value it overall has been is used just and abused. Yes. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, get to our interviews. We have Ross Tucker and. Jordan Palmer coming up. Before we get to that, Bud Light. Bud Light is one of our favorite sponsors. The new Bud Light Lime and Orange are out now, brewed with real orange and lime peels. Famous among friends. You got to have it. It's a best summer drink. Bud Light Lime and Orange. Doesn't that just sound refreshing? So do it. Famous among friends, Bud Light. Thank you for always being a sponsor. Their new Lime and Orange beer is out, and it is delicious. We're also brought to you by ZipRecruiter. Here's a question I'm going to ask you that you don't have to answer. Do you know how to hire for your business? If not, then you're not alone. Hire with ZipRecruiter. The smartest way to hire with ZipRecruiter. One-click posts your job to over 100 of the web's leading job boards, giving you maximum reach with minimum work. Then ZipRecruiter's powerful technology learns what you're looking for, identifies people with the right experience, and invites them to apply to your job. Need a stat to back it up? 80% of employers who post a job on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate through the site in just one day. And our listeners can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash PMT. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash PMT. ZipRecruiter.com slash PMT. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. All right, here he is, Ross Tucker. All right, we now welcome on recurring guest, Ross Tucker. You can find him on, how many podcasts do you have right now? Five. Okay, name. Do you really? Yeah, I, Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Okay, which is daily during the season. What's that three one about? Times a week. It's about football. Okay, this yeah. is like naming your kids. Can you do it? <laughs> <laughs> Remember that? Was that Cromartie. Hard Knocks Cromartie? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Fantasy Feast with Evan Silva from Roto World. We don't give Fantasy, a fuck, obviously. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, even Money Gambling. You should listen to that. Okay. I was up like thirty-eight units last season. Do you have a model? What's a model? An algorithm. So have, just, no. Okay. So just a little say, tip for you. Say yeah. in the future, yeah. I have an algorithm. Yeah. If you want your, if yeah. you want that podcast to pop, <laughs> just tell everyone you got a model, and then dumb brains like myself and PFT will be like, oh, well, if the model says it. So the guy, my co-host, is the only two-time winner of the super contest at the Westgate Casino. Oh. Okay. Well, Steve, how did fish finish in fifteen and yeah, and I beat him last year. Okay. All right. Yeah. Did so you beat our goldfish? Up. And he has all kinds of what's that? Did you beat our goldfish? No, no, probably not. Yeah, probably. Our goldfish went, what? How many? 50, 60%, 60%. 60%. Two years ago. Uh, Finished I'm, like 55. I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm yeah. not sure. We don't think okay, so. so. And, then I have a, and then I have a draft podcast, the college draft. And then Andrew Brandt does business sports. So basically, I started with a football one. I was like, okay, what are people really into other than football, gambling, and fantasy? Yeah. Boom. Mm-hmm. When was the right. last time you had a conversation with somebody that wasn't recorded? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, you basically work in the White House. Uh or in the FBI. Or, or for uh, what's his name, Pioli's Kansas City Chiefs. There you go. That's true. Yeah, yeah part of the go. entire house. <laughs> so let's talk about the draft real quick. Yeah, because let's do it. um, it's my favorite time of year, and that's red flag season. Mm-hmm. Um, tell me why Josh Rosen uh, cares too much about whether or not people think he cares too much about football. <laughs> <laughs> well, my biggest concern with Josh Rosen is. He had two concussions last year where he missed games, right? So I can speak to this. Soft brain. Right. <laughs> so it's I can speak red flag. I can <laughs> I can speak to this, right? So his mom went to Princeton, mm-hmm. which is where I went. His dad went to Penn is like a renowned It's a nice uh, subtle way to tell us you went yeah, to yeah, an yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. His his dad's a renowned spine surgeon, okay? In all sincerity though, the way what we know about brain injuries now, if that guy after he gets drafted third by the Jets, let's say, and it's thirty million guaranteed or whatever he gets that first year. If he gets a concussion in September, I would be there, – there's a big risk there. I'd be concerned how many concussions is Josh Rosen going to play through. Like, he's a very smart kid. His parents are very educated. Knowing what I know now at 39 with two kids, if I get a third concussion in a year, hmm. I'd probably be – see you later. Are you saying he's a- he's so smart that he has more brain cells, therefore he's more likely to get them injured? Mm-hmm. And more likely to want to protect them. So, okay. th- Josh Rosen is interesting to me because I draft Twitter and draft the media around draft. I feel like every single take and every single red flag 
is immediately considered a hot take and problematic in some nature. Right. Josh Rosen, you know, the is he too smart for football? Everyone's like, well, you that's can't say joke, that. That's a joke, but that's a joke. What what Mora said, Big Cat, that was a huge red flag for any NFL team is um, he's got a lot of other interests. That's code language for doesn't love football when right. they say he's got a lot of other interests. Yep. And then he said, if you can really just get him to focus on football when he leaves the facility, like – it's almost like Mora, and I and I know Mora a little bit. It's like he's trying to sabotage a kid. You, that's the last okay. thing a team yeah, yeah. drafting the top five yeah. wants to hear. If if he if he still cares about football when he leaves the facility, they want psychos mm. like Brady and Breeze right. and guys like so that, that. So that's my question. Why is it why is it suddenly problematic to say Josh Rosen might not love football as much as other guys, knowing that to compete at the highest level. A sport that takes so much out of your right. body, you have to love football. It weeds out. What was the what was the um, cornerback for the Browns a couple of years ago? Joe Hayden. Yeah, Joe Hayden. Joe Thomas said he didn't really love football. You know what I mean? He wasn't. No, he, Justin Gilbert. Oh yeah, yeah Justin, Justin Gilbert. Gilbert. Yeah. He Justin didn't really Gilbert. love football. He was yeah. a really talented guy, but he didn't love being there every day, and that matters. Do you so? You remember Mike Williams, big Mike Williams, the offensive tackle from Texas? Yeah. yeah. He was a fourth pick in the draft. Yes. When I was yes. with him in Buffalo, okay, first of all, he came to camp one year at 418, I think. It was either 408 or 418. Why'd they call him? Oh, big, okay. Big Mike. Now I got it. Just yeah. got Mike. The only time he ever got excited was when he was in the player's lounge playing Halo. Like, he was just a big kid that played football to get the money and... Mm-hmm. And because it's what he was supposed to do, but he didn't really love it, and that's why he didn't want to play through injuries. He's a nice guy. It's like, it's not his fault he was born 6'6", 380 or whatever. Dude, he was this wide. It was crazy. It's not his fault that he was born that way, but he didn't really love football, and that's why he didn't have the success he should have. Right, yeah. right. So and, and so that one makes no sense to me, because I think those are all fair things to say about Josh Yes. Rose. And also, the too smart thing, I don't take it as he's too smart for football. I think that is almost saying, does this guy think he's smarter than his coaches? Which is also a problem. Yeah, because well, you can't have Jim a- Mora Jr. It might be true. Yeah, that absolutely <laughs> is true. So the other uh, reg- red flag guy that I don't understand why it's problematic to just say out loud, Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson may be the most exciting college football player in the last decade. Yeah. Right? Just an absolutely, like, you had to, if Lamar Jackson was on on, on Saturday, you had to watch. Yeah. Why is it not okay to say that he was inaccurate on short? Th- like he, if you watch Lamar Jackson, he would miss ten yard outs. Right. He would miss guys in the flats. That matters, right? Like, why yeah. is that now something we can't say? And I, I'm someone who thinks Lamar Jackson is going to be an NFL quarterback and like a decent one. But I, it, it's so weird how draft Twitter and draft media works that you can't even say a negative about some someone without it being like, well, that's a problematic take. I wonder sometimes, like with the Rosen thing, I wonder how much of the people defending him, it's it's a political thing. Right. You know, they agree with his politics, and so they want to defend him. And with Lamar Jackson, I think anytime you say anything like that with an African-American quarterback, people get their dander up, and they say, well, what about Josh Allen? What right. about Josh Allen? And it's like, wait a minute. Josh I mean, Allen's getting ripped to shreds on Twitter. Right. That website's amazing, by the way. Well, that's the truth. Twitter.com? It, it, it's, yeah. no, draftjoshallen.com. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's another good one. Right. You made, you, made, made you say it. <laughs> yeah. um, all right, so. Uh, what? Well, no, there's, there's another guy. So, Baker Mayfield. Yeah. Red yes. flag city for him, too. Um, the red flag for me is, is like, real? what is he doing? Like, he puts his hood up. And he starts oh, to like oh, walk around no. the cops. Where are you going with this? <laughs> like, Where a band okay. <laughs> No, but like, like, what did he think was going to happen? He was just going to be able to like sneak away from the cops. There? Interesting. <laughs> uh, I actually kind of like like the uh, grabbing his crotch. And well, like, yeah, that's, that so, see, I like, that I like that too. That's, that's another thing that you could say. Okay, if you're going to be in the NFL, like that's something that some of your fan base might have a problem with your quarterback out there grabbing his dick. I like that fire. I like my yes. quarterbacks to absolutely hate the team they're playing against. Yeah, yeah, and he and Baker to me, I, I he seems like a guy who just wants to win at all costs, and he has that like he's my number two. He has that you know uh, intangible that it's a gut check thing. Uh, guys who usually do all their draft scouting by just gut checks like us. I want a guy who's that passionate and wants yeah. to win, and you know remembers slights and puts a flag at Ohio State after a big win. I, sports are about emotion. Like emotion 
plays into sports. These guys put in so much work. Of course they're going to celebrate after a win. So why the fuck are we taking that away from him? Yeah, I I think what the way they look at it is that's another thing that they don't feel like most of the top franchise quarterbacks would do. Well, he got the he got both the Johnny Manziel. Uh, you know, they're both from Texas. They're both short. They both run they around. They both got arrested once. They both like to hang out and run around. But you know what the difference is? Baker Mayfield. If you watch Baker Mayfield this past season, it was right around the Ohio State game. He used to be like Johnny Manziel in that like every play was a fire drill. Right. And if you watch the run that Ohio or uh, Oklahoma had take out the Iowa State game, he was really good in the pocket. And he was really good at sticking around and, and reading it. And he would do the fire drill still time to time. But Johnny, Johnny was also an electric college football player, but he would snap the ball and be like, all right, we're playing in the backyard. Let's run around. That doesn't work in the NFL. Right. But Baker, I think, has the skills that do work. He's a much better prospect than Johnny was. So, much so better. who's your, uh, you want to give us your top five? Quarterbacks or players? Just players. Players. Number one. How's it well, going to go in the draft? Well, um, my favorite quarterback's Darnold. Mm-hmm. Um, Not I did the, Josh Allen? No, okay. sorry. I did the U.S. Army Bowl. I haven't met Josh Allen yet. We did. So, so ask tall. us anything. No. Ask me anything. <laughs> ask me how tall he is and how big his hands are. Uh, Saquon Barkley, I watch every play he had at Penn State. Right. The guy's a total freak. So um, he, he's the best player in the draft, right? I think the best player in the draft is Quentin Nelson, but I'm a biased O-line okay. lover. Yeah. Do, you that guy, the, do you think he'll last for the Bears or no? No. Yeah. I, I hope he Colts does. Though. Probably take he him. is... Like he's like O line porn for me. He when I saw like, like, like I was doing he, some he's research. Type of guy, he's yeah. type of guy like at night right before yeah. going to bed. Like I might put on some Quentin Nelson highlights just I, to watch. Him. I was doing some research on Quentin Nelson, and that's not watching game uh, tape. It's looking at his Instagram. He's fucking shredded. He's not. He does not look like an O lineman. He was in the U.S. Army Bowl too. He weighed three thirty and could dunk. He is. You know, hard he has a six pack. That's He's insane. a six pack. You know, hard to dunk at three hundred thirty like, pounds. I, I don't like, like this new generation of offensive linemen that just look like huge running backs. Yeah, they're just freak athletes. Yeah. like Lane Johnson. Uh, I like Chubb. I like, um, and I'd probably put Baker Mayfield in my top five. So, I like Minka Fitzpatrick too. So where is Josh Allen going? And why do you? Why are you being biased towards tall people? So my concern with Josh Allen, the accuracy thing, people point out, but man, he. Like, he'll see a guy coming like a blitzer, and maybe he's just so big and so tall and his hands are so big and his arms so strong mm-hmm. that he doesn't care. He's a winner. but And he's a winner. But he, he like, doesn't move. Like, he doesn't react to it. I'm a little worried about how fast he processes things. So he can take a things. hit. So he's not afraid of pain. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. That's fair. Big negative. So processing is a problem. I have, I have red flags for you guys, by the way. Yeah, so let's so, yeah. hear them. So if we're draft prospects, me and Big Cat, we've declared ourselves eligible. We've hired an agent. Um, what would be our red flags? Uh, you both have two. Oh. Big Cat, the biggest red flag is the weight fluctuation. Yes. Mm-hmm. So we would have to have some type of clauses yeah. in the contract. Yeah. Because it makes us wonder about how seriously you take your health and your football career, mm-hmm. that your weight fluctuates up and down. You also um, have a long history of questioning authority at airlines. Oh, mm-hmm. no. Whoa, whoa. I don't question authority. I tell them I'm the boss. Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, but it, wouldn't, that's that a make, red flag. wouldn't that make me uh, the quarterback on the field? And no. also I'm playing quarterback? No. Because you enter into a contract with the airline when you purchase a ticket, but, uh, and so now you're questioning your contract. Yeah, it's put a, a red flag. On my what other contracts are you going to want to redo? I'm telling you. Uh, PFT, you've got two as well. Well, then I don't have I don't have one. Number one, <laughs> got you there. No, number one is it's a confidence issue, mm-hmm. and it's it's with the sunglasses. Uh. And I don't know if it's overconfident, like I wear sunglasses all the time because I'm just that cool, mm-hmm. or if you're actually shy and you don't want people to see you, so you you wear the sunglasses to kind of well, hide. I do eyes. It, I do it as a favor to everybody else because I've got such piercing blue eyes. But either way, that either it would way, be unfair. Your eyes are great. Either don't way, lie the to sunglasses everyone. the sunglasses are confident. You're either overconfident or underconfident. You're Wait, not the proper confident. What if his favorite player is uh, future Hall of Famer Ladanian Tomlinson, and he just likes the visor look? Mm-hmm. Think about that. That's possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, LT. If you're doing comps, if you're doing comps, comps yeah. that would be a comp. Me and LT. Yeah. <laughs> Your other red flag is um, poor decision making. I heard yeah, on a recent podcast true. where you said the only team you care about is the Washington <laughs> Capitals. Yeah, that's the only team you care about. So that, that's on a poor Cincinnati decision Reds. maker. And yeah. not only that, you're you're not a winner. 
I well, you know no, I, mean? I like, am a winner. No, 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 until, no, no, until no, no. The, playoffs. the only team you care about is the Capitals. Ipso facto, you're not. A, we want winners, so that's a red flag that you're a loser. I well, I like winning the President's Trophy. Are you also taking like the uh, Josh Rosen standpoint that you don't respect the presidents? Yeah. <laughs> also, spin zone. We were talking earlier about uh, the off season training. PFT always has his calendar open in April, like mid April. He doesn't have anything. Mm -hmm. Caps are out. That's true. Yes. Yeah. No social obligations. <laughs> April and May. Why are you not like a Redskins fan? Or I uh, hate. I hate Dan Snyder. He's boycotted. I hate Dan Snyder. What? Occasionally, when they're good, um, I'll be like, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll root for the Redskins again. I'm sorry, the R words. Um, but I just, I can't stand Dan Snyder. I think he tries to milk every single penny that he can out of all the fans, and he charges. Uh, $85 for obstructed view seats where you sit directly behind a pillar. He charges money for training camp. He is, I, I think, got, I got, also I got top, you, top 10 pieces of shit. PFT is also, uh, not to compliment him here, but I'm going to compliment him, he is such a football fan that liking just one team mm -hmm. would be a disservice to right. football. That's also right. true. He's the guy who has a pin. He has like all the pins from the Super Bowls and shit on <laughs> I, his body at I all times. I have a starter jacket that just yeah. has the shield on the back. Yeah, yeah, right. you, give us uh, one name. That is going to shock us in the first round. One name that might jump up, uh, or or the other way, like would Lamar Jackson somehow slip to the second round? Something like that. I, everyone loves Mason Rudolph. I've Mason Rudolph makes no sense to me. Um, I'm going to go with I'm going to go with Rose in the fall. Really? Hmm. I think I think Darnold goes one. I think. Maybe some Barkley or a quarterback at two. I think Mayfield at three. I don't. I, I think. I think he ends up falling, f faller than uh, you know, faster than people think. Yeah, because yeah. then it falls farther, off with guys who, for. who don't uh, teams that don't need quarterbacks. Yep, I think he's the one. So think about this: like you are uh, a G. Like you guys interviewed Ryan Pace once, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He probably has a couple young kids or whatever. Yeah. So put yourself in a GM shoes. It, and you draft one of these guys, if they are a bust, you're done. Yeah. Like you are, like Trubisky, right? Yeah, no, you're, no, you're done. Is, yeah. So are you going to put your faith in a guy who has some questionable decision making, is maybe one concussion away from never playing again, and also his coach basically went out of his way to say the guy doesn't really love football and doesn't really put time into it away from the facility? I, that. I would want to be able to sleep at night. Like, whoever you take, that guy's your life. Yeah. Like, Howie Roseman's to whole life is different because he took Wentz. But, on the on the flip side, I think Josh Rosen's the best passer in the game. That's what they in say. In the draft. Yeah. And and if, I, if you're the Jets, you do have Teddy Bridgewater. So, like, a team like that, I could see making a play. Because, like, Teddy might maybe, come back. Teddy might be good again. Maybe a Giants situation. I actually think Rosen will go to the Giants. That's I think the their, only guy they, they like is Donald. Him. Really? Huh. So what are the Browns going to do with one and four? Two quarterbacks. I, 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 I wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't mind that. <laughs> they should. I wouldn't mind that. Um, no, I think they'll well, take – Well, no, a, you, get, you take one quarterback and you take Lamar what Jackson if you guys, playing the wide receiver. Or what you if, take – you get Josh Allen to be like your third and fourth down quarterback. Yeah, or you get Josh Allen at tight end and Lamar Jackson wide receiver and, and take then, two quarterbacks but no quarterbacks. Yes. <laughs> Legit first NFL game I ever went to was Eagles like 85 or 86. Ron Jaworski was the quarterback. They had drafted Randall Cunningham. They only brought Randall Cunningham in if it was third and ten or more. Mm -hmm. Like, which nowadays, that's the worst situation yeah. that you could possibly put a young quarterback in. Yeah. But Randall could, like, that was the first NFL game I ever went to. They would boo Jaworski. Randall would come in on like third and 16 and be like, yeah, because he would just run around. So that goes to your Josh Allen theory. Mm -hmm. What? How, how concerned are you guys that your guy, that, you know, draftjoshallen.com, that he might go to Cleveland, uh, given the history of Cleveland. I think he would be a great Cleveland quarterback. I think his name would look really good on the back of that jersey that has the entire list of like the last 16 starters. Yeah. And the real answer is, I think we only bought draftjoshallen.com for 12 months, so it will expire. And we'll just <laughs> yeah. pretend none of this ever happened. Who's the best wide receiver in this draft? Oh, DJ Moore. DJ Moore from Maryland. What about, uh, what about the Berrios kid? Do you think he's going to be okay in the NFL? Well... I mean, what, it's not really worth talking about when we know what team he's going to yeah, play for. Very true. Yeah, the Patriots What's got the, him. I mean, yeah, true. I don't know. There's much of a point about point. that. Oh, I have a hot take for you. Yeah, I think the best running back in the draft Geis. is Geis. I knew you were yep. going to say that. Mm -hmm. He was also in the U.S. Army Bowl, 
and he was the MVP of the game. Mm-hmm. And he, dude, have you guys talked to him yet? We haven't. But I'm on record. Like he's two, amazing. Two years ago, I thought amazing. I thought Geis was going to be the better NFL prospect than uh, Leonard Fournette. And Fournette had a great rookie season. I still think Geis is going to be better than him. You and you. So you think Geis is better than Saquon Barkley? Yeah. This they'll is, both have very good careers. But is it fair to say that this is primarily based on Penn State beating your Badgers in the Big Ten Championship last year? No, I don't two think years about ago? that. I don't think about that. It doesn't bother you? No. I don't think about that. <laughs> the Big Ten Championship game two years in a row? No. Penn State should have had the death penalty. So everything that they went after, I don't count Asterix. my record book. Yeah. Um, right. All right. Ross Tucker. You can catch him on. Uh, just go on iTunes and yeah. just scroll and then stop and you'll <laughs> just, land on one you know of the podcasts. Yeah, you have to say scroll Alex, farther than, p- pardon my take, Alexa you have to scroll a little bit farther football down. football podcast and he will, you, there's a one in two chance that you'll you'll land on a Ross Tucker. There you go. Joint. If, if I can't have five million people listen to every episode like you guys, I'm going I'm going for the volume play. Yeah, okay. That's yeah. smart. It's actually the same people listen to every single, your mom is listening to every single one of your podcasts and then you count it as different. Nice. Smart. That interview was brought to you guys by Peloton. Do you want the convenience of joining a group cycling class whenever you want, right in your own living room? Well, don't let a busy schedule keep you from getting a great workout in. Lose the commute to the gym and let the workouts come to you. I've got a Peloton bike in my apartment. People say that I don't. I've noticed that a lot. When I do this ad read, people are like, yo, PFT, you definitely don't have a Peloton bike. I do have a Peloton bike. It's in my living room. It's next to my TV. I can watch TV while I take a class. It's awesome. It's so convenient. I don't have to worry about walking to the gym. Don't have to worry about coming back. It's great to take a shower in your own house after your own workout. I love it. You don't even have to leave your living room. Peloton is a cutting-edge indoor cycling bike that leaves live studio classes right to your house. No worrying about fitting classes into your busy schedule or making it to a studio with a crazy commute. You ride live with the entire Peloton community that's spread across the whole country right in your living room. Up to 14 new classes are added every day with over 8,000 on demand. That's a shitload of classes. Variety of workouts to choose from. You got 45-minute classes, 20-minute burns, hip-hop, rock and roll, low impact or high intensity. You're not going to get bored. Pick the class structure and style that works for you. You can get classes led by elite New York instructors in your own living room, live stream studio classes taught by the world's best teachers, or you can find your favorite class on demand. With real-time metrics, you can track your performance over time. You can ride thousands of other riders at, or you can ride with thousands of other riders at the same time, and the real-time leaderboard keeps you motivated to do your best. It's got 22-inch high-def touchscreen. It's like you're watching TV while you bike. It's great. It's nearly silent. It's super, super quiet. It's got a compact 2 by 4 footprint so it can fit in your house, even in your office. Uh, it is simply the best workout that you can do in your own home. Discover this cutting-edge indoor cycling bike that brings the studio experience to your home. They are offering listeners a limited-time offer. Go to OnePeloton.com, enter the code PMT at checkout, and get $100 off accessories with your Peloton bike purchase. Get a great workout at home anytime you want. Go to OnePeloton.com, use the promo code PMT, and get started. Now, something completely different. All right, we now welcome on uh, former NFL quarterback and now quarterback whisperer slash guru, Jordan Palmer. Let's actually start there. You're from the QBSummit.com. Are you... Hold on. Let's, let's start somewhere else. Okay. Those are like the two worst words. Like, no, I'll well, go, those well, are the only words I know. Yeah, right? that's that's what I want to start with. Are you a whisperer or a guru? You guys are like pioneers of this space. I think anytime you guys get a guy like me who has a like a weird non-title, that's a great opportunity to just like... You make up what the word should be. Okay, so okay, snake oil I, listen, salesman. Listen, I, I've I've looked at a lot of you LinkedIn profiles. Okay, yeah. um, you are a quarterback ninja, a quarterback rock star. Ninja. All That's right, what you go. say right. when you don't we'll have any, any other title on LinkedIn. Ninja. Okay, so quarterback ninja Jordan Palmer. Um, what exactly do you do? Yeah, um, I love helping quarterbacks kind of at, at the stage of their career where they need to take a step. Um, and so as it pertains to these guys I'm working with for the draft, you know, they're, they're transitioning from college to pro. It's a huge jump. Um, I like helping guys that are, that are transitioned from high school to college. And then young guys uh, run these camps called QB summits where kids come from all over the country. And that's kids that are in high school. They're trying to get a scholarship or trying to, to pick a school or trying to start for the first time. And so I really like, I, I can be really helpful in that phase. And, and the draft is just my favorite because, you know, there's really only one period of time. Let's say that, that uh, these quarterbacks are going to play 15 years in the league and they started playing in fifth grade. There's really only one time in their whole life where for three months all they're going to worry about is themselves. They don't have teammates. 
They don't have coaches. They don't have family bugging them to hang out. They don't have friends trying to get them to go out at night. They don't have marketing deals. They don't have class. They don't have other sports. They're just working on themselves. And so it's an opportunity in their whole career. Really, And it'll never happen again, but it's an opportunity where they can get exponentially better. So you're like just a best friend for hire for these quarterbacks in between the time that they stop hire, yeah. playing football and the time they start playing football again. Yeah, and it all started with a swipe right, you know, and we made a connection, and then <laughs> um, and then I started uh, teaching them all the ninja moves. So who's better, Sam Darnold or Josh Allen? Oh, man, good, good stuff. I think um, yes. they're so different. Um, mm. I, I know they're I know they're both kind of from smaller towns and um, athletes with big strong arms, but uh, the personalities are different. Their skill sets are different. You know, I think Sam, uh, you know, some that's underrated with a lot of your listeners is going to be the presence that's set in the NFL on throwing people open, like throwing with anticipation and touch. And Sam is, is one of the better guys I've ever seen at that. Um, and then with Josh Allen, just the arm talent allows kind of anybody to be open. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you yep. can put it anywhere on the field. You're right. Um, so that's a unique skill set. But there's very few things where they're the same at. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot there's a gap in like every attribute on them, and and it's it's pretty damn even, man. I I, I literally don't know who I'd take. It just would depend on the system I'm playing in. Well, when you first saw yeah. Josh Allen and you you saw those fingertips working, were you like, oh damn, look at that fingertip speed? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I've always been drawn to fingertip speed. Uh, you have to be. It's, uh, it's usually the first thing I notice, and uh, uh, Josh had it in spades. But, no, Josh has done, got a – you guys spent some time with Josh, right? Yeah. yeah. We actually – I mean, I'm not saying that we did your He's job cool – shit, right? We did, yeah, we, not saying we did your job better than you, but I'd say we created more buzz for Josh Allen than you did. Oh, 100%. Okay, thanks. I'm not – I'm not – I'm not the I'm not the, the buzz generator. I'm the QB ninja. Oh you yeah, that's true. Buzz ninja, Shit, buzz generator. Right? So we are. But the we'll ninjas. still take a cut the from you. The last thing a ninja yeah. wants to do is draw attention to himself. True, true. All right, so let me ask you the question a little different way. Stats are for losers. Who's better, Josh Allen or Sam, Sam Darnold? I, I'm giving you the same answer. It just depends on what Shit. system you're in. I, I think what, with Sam, his ability to like move around and create time and space. This is actually an interesting discussion. So I think a quarterback's ability. To move around and create time and space, meaning extend the play. They're running, you know, a curl flat comes a combination, but then the quarterback run, gets outside the pocket. And now everybody goes deep in its simplest form. The quarterback's ability to do that is, I think, the future of the position. In fact, I wouldn't take a quarterback moving forward that couldn't do that because O line play is starting to deteriorate. All these colleges, they get less time with the guys. NFL, the new CBA, they get less time with the guys. And the O-line play in the league as a whole is getting worse and worse every year. So the idea that teams would say, well, if we draft this guy and we get a great O-line for 10 years, like that's just not even a threshold I would look at. And uh, both these dudes are – I mean, Josh, you guys saw him. He's enormous, but he's actually Tall. super, super fast and can yes. stop and start. So I think both those guys, um, like that's going to be a precedent for them for sure when they get in the league. Okay. What if now? Let me rephrase this a little bit here. Um, what if you were stranded on a desert island with both Sam and Josh, and you had to pick one to get you off using just his his cunning abilities, his mental acuity? Who are you going with? Or his body? If you but just you want to like, you tie his body up and, and body float him off on a raft. Yeah. Um, neither of them are very buoyant. They've been working really hard. They trimmed a lot of the uh, a lot of the uh, college weight off. Um, I would say this. Have you guys seen our TV show, Draft Academy? Yes, I, every night. So if you've seen how scared Josh is of sharks, I took these guys out on an outrigger canoe. And, I mean, this is like this is like I've never heard of a grown man be that scared of one thing before. Uh-huh. Um, so I, would, no, I wouldn't get caught dead on, a, on an island with Josh Allen cause just for his fear of the ocean. So Jordan uh, Palmer Sam likes – Better okay. swimmer. Okay. Sam can surf a little bit. Mm-hmm. I, I just feel like – much, much safer with Sam Darnold in that situation. But Josh has a stronger arm, so he could throw you off the island. So you didn't think if, about that. If stopping a boat that was passing by by throwing coconuts, yeah, and it was sheer distance. Got to make sure I'd, that I take it towards Josh. Yeah, got to make sure that he but if I had to puts his left foot down though, correctly. In fact, if I if we had to swim somewhere for our survival, I'd take Josh just because I know that he's be the slower swimmer, and you don't have to swim faster than the shark. You got to swim faster than the guy next to you. That's a great point. True. Um, was really it your was thinking. it your idea to get them stuck in a revolving door together? <laughs> I, 
I didn't know about that until I saw it online. That was comedy. Yeah, these guys are they've, they've like become best friends. You guys, you guys ever seen the movie Hot Rod? Yeah. Uh, Andy Samberg. So this uh, is like their movie, and I would say like fifty percent of their conversations involve a line from Hot Rod. Twenty five percent involve conversation around what happened on Monday on The Bachelor. I got them on The Bachelor. Oh jeez. Um, and then the rest of the twenty five percent of it is like like intelligent conversations about like normal things. Okay. So all right. So maybe these guys aren't Josh Rosen. A little different than those, than, uh, you know, pre-calc and all that stuff. We're talking about The Bachelor, but I like it. Um, all right, so last question, uh, and then we'll let you go. Who gets picked first, Sam Darnold or Josh Allen? Um, honestly, normally you kind of have an idea. Um, and this year, this me like, you know, saying, I don't know. You know, I, I have no idea. I think John Dorsey in Cleveland, I think they know what they're going to do, but they they've been a vault man they don't nobody really knows what they're doing a bunch of people think it's josh a bunch of people think it's sam um and in terms of like internal people who know what's going on um so they've done a great job i have no idea what's going to happen and you know i'm not their agent again i'm just their ninja right mm-hmm. so you guys came up with a great great title um so i don't really care I, I want them to go to good spots and at the top of the draft this year a bunch of the teams that are up there are really good spots and and uh you know and have good situations and have good you know, coaching staff, good offensive minds, and all, all that stuff that goes into it. So, for me, I, I feel like this is just house money for these guys. I, I just shifted to fan, so I put my ninja costume away, and now I'm just kind of a fan and excited to see what's going to happen on Thursday. In terms of fit, Hugh Jackson, who fits his system better, Darnold or Allen? Well, well, the, I, don't, I don't have an answer because they, they've added Todd Haley as offensive coordinator, and, you know, they're – building what that looks like right now and what it's the last couple of months. So I, I don't know what that's going to look like, the verbiage and what they're going to use. So I, I don't really have an answer for that because I don't think anybody outside that building knows exactly how that offense is going to look. Yeah. Um, but I, I do, I, I love that he teaches the game. He was an unbelievable coach, man. He's, I know they've been one in 31 last year, but yeah. this guy knows a ton of ball. <laughs> if you talk to other coaches in the league, everybody thinks he's, I mean, borderline brilliant. He's a really, really smart football mind. So bringing in Todd Haley, bringing in this quarterback coach, Ken Zampezi, who I used to play for, um, I think that's a really good fit for either any of these quarterbacks uh, because I think that's a lot of really good offensive minds in the room. And the fans, that's something there is a big disconnect in, and all coaches are seeing the same, except for Bilicek, right, with the cutoff sleeves and, and the gear that he rocks. But everybody else is like kind of looks the same, but it is not. There are teams that have better offensive minds than others, and uh, Cleveland's one of those teams that has a great, great group of offensive minds. It really just comes down to who could win a fist fight against Todd Haley because isn't that how all Todd Haley offenses are run? You just basically run his plays until you want to fight him, and can Josh Allen fight Todd Haley? Yeah, I feel like that's pretty well documented. I mean, even Kurt Warner. Yeah. You know, he, they got into it. I mean, He Kurt might like, even sworn. The yeah. nicest guy, I don't know, in the United States. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, I wouldn't put it past him, but it's it's probably with a ninja background. It's more about self-defense, you not being the aggressor. True. So I True. think um, – Whoever can stay more composed in that situation will, will thrive. So, reading between the lines, you say Sam Darnold's going number one. <laughs> what do you guys think is going to happen? Uh, I was hoping you'd at least deny it so then I could say, okay, then Josh Allen. Uh, You're good at this. Uh, I not, think. Not my first interview. I think the Browns are going to take Sam Darnold. I think so, too. Yeah. Okay. And I think it's going to be the biggest mistake of their life. Yeah. I think it's going to haunt them for the next 12 months. Yeah. You think they should take Josh? Yes, absolutely. Josh what you, Allen. What do you guys like about Josh? Uh, his hand hands, size. And he so looks cold. good in shorts. It's cold in Cleveland, yeah. so he's got bigger thumbs. He's also tall. He can throw the ball fucking 90 yards. Country mile. Yeah, fingertip speed. What's not to like? Fingertip speed. That he's gets white. me going. He could be a DJ. There's, yeah. yeah, so there's, there's DJ you guys, Yeah. I, yeah, I, that is some things I didn't even think about. Yeah, I think you guys got it pretty well covered. <laughs> what is your background? You guys former personnel guys? Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I'm uh, the executive vice president of football operations I was for he- Blake Bortles Wikipedia Club. Yeah, I was head of scouting ops uh, <laughs> for the Bears, uh, so I watch all their games. So, I, yeah, that's about it. Do you watch the All-22? Uh, I don't. I watch it on a different yeah. different platform, but uh, I, oh. I watch games. Oh, Wait, are you a virtual reality guy? Whoa, 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 whoa. What does Josh McCown think this? about those different platforms you you're watching a, it on? You got a little special link to All-22? <laughs> Damn. I use Exos. I use Exos, what everybody uses. Oh, oh okay. Here's a good question. You guys are former personnel guys. They didn't let you guys walk out of the building. With no, the we know Exos. That was, yeah. a, that was a question for you. And you fit, oh, okay, you good. you passed. You know you're what Exos is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, do you ever get pissed off that uh, that Jesse Palmer got to go on The Bachelor and you didn't? You know, I don't, but it's so funny. When I was in college, I went to school in El Paso, Texas. Right? I had one offer out of high school. And uh, so I moved from, like, basically, like, Laguna Beach, California to El Paso, Texas. And, they don't, like, it's not a football town, right? Like, they rally around the team, and it's great, but it's not a, a community of people that grew up loving and, you know, football and knowing everything about it. And so at that time, Jesse Palmer was the bachelor. And so I think there were a lot of people at school who weren't football fans who knew that, like, knew I was a quarterback and knew that my brother was, like, a guy who played football. And I would say that 99% of the people – when I was walking around, probably like they all thought or asked at some point if my brother was Jesse Palmer. Yeah. Because they just never really heard of Carson Palmer. Between and you so, and, and like Aaron Rodgers' brother going on the bat, you're really the only quarterback brother that hasn't done it. I know. It's crazy. That's sad. I'm happily married. I got a kid and another one on the way, but oh, congrats I, mean, on I, the sex. I also haven't missed a Bachelor Bachelorette episode since it started um, or, you know, the Bachelor Olympics that was a big hit this year or Bachelor in Paradise, which is coming out this summer. On ABC, so I mean, it, I'm, I'm in the game. I'm as close as you can get. I actually, I actually went to the Bachelor Final Rose episode. If you guys look that up, you'll see me right behind Chris Harrison. Uh, I'll take your word yeah, for I took it, Kyle Allen. Yeah, I'll yeah, take your word yeah, for I mean, it. I, I put in my time, and you know, I, I think I can separate the crazies easy. <laughs> that's actually, yeah, that's good. That's part of you, those are billable hours. You're you're doing some psychoanalysis that you can use in your in your work with quarterbacks. Yeah, and but also like the premise of it is is the hot crazy scale, right? You know that that YouTube video where the, that guy breaks it down for us. I feel mm-hmm. like I learned a lot that day. Yep. And I, if I were put in a position to be on the Bachelor, I would thrive. Yeah. Um, Jordan, thank you so much. Next time you're in New York, you got to come here and teach us how to throw footballs better. Oh, I would love to. I, and the biggest thing is like I'll give you guys some routines to get that finger speed up. Yep. Um, and then I got a couple. That thumb side. Yeah. Okay. But I like what that, you're saying. Yeah, that's kind of all there is. To it. Okay, right. I'll all work right. on my fingering speed. Yeah, yeah. So Jordan Palmer, quarterback ninja, and next time you're in New York, we'll do a video where you uh, teach us how to finger faster. Perfect. And that interview was brought to you guys by the Barstool Facebook group. That's right. We've got a group on Facebook dedicated to our podcast. Uh, part of my take, mixtape, zero blog, thirty high haters, the new one with our good friend Chaps. Go subscribe right now. Um, even Hank's new podcast, Hank's Corner, where he, he comes up with jokes on the spot. You're going to want to tune into that one. If you're listening to me right now, you already know about part of my take, but you know where to give us feedback on each episode. Find out which guests we have coming up, or discover a new Barstool podcast launching soon. Well, you can go to the Barstool Podcast Club on Facebook, a place. F- for a place for listeners of every podcast on our network to discuss our shows together and stay informed about what Barstool is coming out with next. In this group, you're going to have daily discussions about new episodes, a new place for you to promote your own material, and even find out what other Barstool sports fans are listening to each day. Give us your feedback. Join the club. Go to facebook.com slash groups slash Barstool Podcasts. That's facebook.com slash groups slash Barstool Podcasts. All you have to do is say that Hank's Joke Corner sent you. Join right now. All right, let's get to some segments. Uh, first up, we have a PR 101 for Kevin Durant. He has caught himself in a little pickle yet again. So he went uh, on Instagram and fake, or sorry, accidentally liked a Instagram comment saying that Russ is the problem. Accidentally liked it. Accidentally liked it, which is pretty- also the exact thing that he said with his burner account to himself that Russ was the problem. Yeah, so it's it's pretty difficult to accidentally like a comment mm-hmm. on Instagram. You yeah. have to go through like five levels of security to get to that point. Yes. Um, so I don't know if I buy it necessarily, but... I, uh, no, I, wait, wait. Well, I you don't, don't buy know it. if you don't buy it? I don't, I don't buy it, but, no I, do have, but I, I do have some advice for Kevin because I've never seen a guy that's more in need of having his own podcast. Basically... Wait, Nobody should have their own podcast, as a general rule of thumb. But Kevin Durant should have a podcast. But he, he would, he he would has just a be lot angry of, the whole yes, time. Yes, and it would be great. No, it wouldn't, because if you listen to him angry, he just sounds salty. He's a baby back bitch. I'm not saying that people would... That's what you call it. If he calls it baby back bitch, then I'd listen to I'm it. I'm not saying that people would listen to it. I'm saying he just needs to have a podcast. He needs to sit down in front of a microphone, get all of his emotions out, and then feel like other people are well, listening so to no, it. So actually, he doesn't need a podcast. He needs like Creed thoughts. Yeah, he needs he a just blog. Needs, he he needs, needs a tomato can and string, and be like, Kevin... This is your podcast. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. We'll stream it out to all the people, mm-hmm. and he can just talk shit about Russ and have no n- no backlash because yes. 
this guy, he's like, and then he's going to blame the blog boys for writing about it. Dude, you keep bashing Russ Westbrook and then pretending like you're not. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's if he just came out and said I don't like Russell Westbrook, I think no one would have a problem with it. That's the thing. His problem is that he cares too much that people think that he hates Russell Westbrook. But he does. So yeah, and he does. <laughs> yeah. If Russell Westbrook, if somebody if Russell Westbrook had had liked to comment on Instagram saying Katie is a baby back bitch, nobody would care about it because Russell Westbrook would be like, Yeah, he's a baby back bitch and I don't like him. Right. And so he's kind of reached that level of acceptance. With KD, he's still like, No, no, we're still good friends. Yeah, we're friends. Yeah, yeah. It's it's we just not don't big, talk that I much. just had to leave the team that almost went to the NBA finals. It's just bad because it's bad so- I just just had to reception. find myself out in, in California. It's bad cell phone reception in Oklahoma City, so he probably doesn't get my text or calls. Yeah. So, like, you know, that's why he doesn't get back to me. Kevin, you know what? Feel free to come on this podcast because if you've heard, which you probably are listening because you listen to everything, I canceled Russell Westbrook at the beginning of this show. So mm-hmm. this is a this is a, a free zone to uh, hate on Russell Westbrook. So open invite. Mm. And we're we actually never do... going to air your interview, though. Yeah. It'll just be a it'll be proof of concept for our fake podcast experiment. Right. We have blog for boys. It. Just talk to us. Blog boys. Just call me. Yeah, Kevin. Just call me and talk to me. Um, all right. Next up, we have it. So we haven't done this in a while. That's but... the um, for those uh, listening. That's the collar tugging uh, noise. Uh, uh, so uh, this little nugget from Peter King's column was that. Baker Mayfield visited the Broncos facility, mm-hmm. and apparently John Elway is somewhat infatuated with him. And they were having lunch, just the two of them, in the Broncos cafeteria. And then in walks Case Keenum at the salad bar, and he looks over, and it's John Elway and Baker Mayfield. Imagine walking into that, and you see John Elway having his his daily lunch of hay and oats oh. and the salt lick that he just yeah. <laughs> Sips up a little bit, and then you're like, oh, that guy is here to take my job. I just imagine that Mike Glennon called up Case Keenum and was like, hey, man, it's okay. You're still getting paid. Mm -hmm. It's not that bad of a deal. Like You're going to start the first four games. You're going to suck. Everyone's going to want Baker. Then you can just hang out on the sideline for the rest of the year and and cash a paycheck. Yeah, and then the Texans will give you $18 million next year. Right, exactly. So it's not so bad. It's not so bad. It's actually a pretty sweet gig if you can get it. Uh, I do love Trevor Simeon just hanging out at the team facility all the time, even when they're not practicing, because that's rule number one. If Wait, you Trevor it. Simeon or Case Keenum? Or sorry, Case, Case Keenum. Ke- I, I was said like, Simeon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Case Keenum. That's rule. I was like, that, that sounds like Trevor Simeon. Yeah, that's rule number one for Case Keenum. Or that's rule number one, just in general. If you're not that good at your job, mm-hmm. is you just you just hang out around the office a lot, right? And then people are like, "Oh, well, we can't fire this guy. The workplace will be so different without right. him." Like, it, it, they they won't think He's that the glue. It gets into the back of their head, though. If mm-hmm. you're always in the hallway, you're all you, you're it's the first presence. guy in last He's a presence. Guy. You're a presence there, yeah. and the best part is Pax and Lynch somewhere. He was probably just ripping a bong and was like, "Oh, who's that new guy?" Mm-hmm. And he just doesn't even know what's going on. Yeah. I can't believe like, people don't talk about Pax and Lynch enough. Pax and Lynch. Pax and Lynch is a fucking is going to be a, a first round draft pick that plays like three games in the NFL. Pax and Lynch and Swag Kelly were, were recording like a new mixtape for their SoundCloud in like the locker room, and so they didn't even know yeah. that anybody was there. I'm rarely right, but that Pax and Lynch, I called that one because I watched that one game where he threw five <laughs> interceptions <laughs> in the bowl game, and like in you know I. I think it was in Mississippi on December 23rd, mm-hmm. and it was 40 degrees, and no one was watching except me because I bet him. Mm-hmm. He fucking sucked. I think John Elway's problem is that he just loves every quarterback. Yeah. As a former quarterback, he will love you if he sees you wear. If you, you wear throw in, a football. If you throw a football in front of him, he's like, I'm in love with this yeah, guy. This he's guy. awesome. We got a lot right in common. Now, look on the roster. He's got three guys that he's been in love with. Yes. And then and, Bro- and, and then, Brock. And then two years ago, he had three <laughs> completely different guys that yeah. he was in love with. And so Baker Mayfield sits down in front of him he's like well now I'm in love with this guy yeah um, alright last up before we get to guys on chicks we have Sabermetrics it is actually maybe no longer Sabermetrics because Colin Coward has coined a new term Manalytics he was talking about the Rockets and not believing in them because you can look at all the analytics in the regular season but when it comes down to crunch time he's looking at Manalytics what you are is a tough guy how you can play in the playoffs that's Manalytics finally numbers for dudes are we in the trust tree? We're in the trust tree. I think I know where you're going to go with this. I 100% agree with yes. you. Yes. Okay. Like, he, yeah. it's it sounds stupid, and I'm sure people... This is one of those situations where uh, people will jump on him for the hot take stuff, but in, in, the, in the phrase is stupid and corny. Colin Coward, here's, but, but here's what idea- I thought when I saw Colin, Colin Coward has manalytics. 
How many fathers did John Wall have? Right. But, That's but, what I thought. But the theory behind it, that the regular season doesn't matter and the playoffs get a lot harder and you're flashy, you know, you know, per and how you, you know, score at such an insane pace in the middle of December, that doesn't matter in the playoffs. Is, and I totally agree with him. There is, as a Capitals fan, I know exactly what you're talking about. There is something to be said about stress building up, you know, like you're in a uh, more high pressure situation in the playoffs, especially if you're playing against one of the best teams like the Golden State Warriors in a, in a like a, a really clutch situation. You can that shit gets to you yeah. if you're not used to it and yeah. if you're not conditioned it's for analytics. it. So I agree with Colin Coward. Eyeball the, test. I agree with it. I just especially love the phrase manalytics. Oh, it's a and great so I'm, phrase. I'm, I a tip of the cap to you, Colin. It sucks that we can't mock manalytics because they it actually makes sense. People yeah. and now other people will mock it and they, that means they don't understand what he was saying. And I hate to do it. I hate to side with Colin Coward, but manalytics are real. Uh, all right, Hank, guys on checks. Hey boys, especially Slimmer Cat. Eh, oh, not eh, really anymore. I fell off a little bit. I slipped up. I slipped up. I'm seven months pregnant and my boyfriend keeps pestering me to have sex. At what point should we stop having sex for the baby's sake? Well, first of all, congratulations on uh, not feeling the need to get married just because you're pregnant. I think a lot of people rush into marriage when you get knocked up, and good for you. Yeah, and uh, I don't know. Like, what, at what point does the at what point does the dick hit the baby? Uh, I'd say third trimester. Okay, so then that's when you got to stop. What month did they say they were in? Well, seven. Seven. If so you got to stop. If it's a male baby, then is that male baby currently cucking your own girlfriend? Yeah. Because he's inside her. Why don't you just tell your boyfriend that they actually have a Reddit for this? Ken Bone is the moderator. <laughs> yeah. You're a beautiful human <laughs> submarine. That's the good news. <laughs> Sup, boys, especially PFT. I don't actually so. need advice right now, but I have a bonus woe segment for you guys. The word none is just the letter N doing a cartwheel. Wait, the word none. Whoa. Ha ha ha, that's fucking good. That's good. But it's that's also really good. But it's also a C at some point. N- yeah, but it's N- you're that's mid cartwheel. You can't count N- you can't count that. N- uh, Nuckin'. Hey guys, I think my boyfriend is trying to classically condition me. Whenever he compliments me, he claps. How should I feel about this? <laughs> this guy's a genius. Hey. He's training you like a dog. What's up? Yeah. Hey, you seem hot. Wait, so if we just clap, just repeatedly. So Everyone what? subscribe and then unsubscribe. So when you go to a concert, you just feel great. You feel like the prettiest girl in the world. Yeah. Between songs. I think it's not working, though, because if you figured it out, it's not working, right? Mm-hmm. Like she's on to it. Which one is this? This is Schrodinger's arrow. Yeah, you need to st- have loves cat. You need to buy like a, a dog whistle or something. Fight fire with fire. Mm-hmm. Just start dog whistling in his ear. Yeah, just condition him. Yeah. Why are tampons so expensive? Are they? It's the string. Okay. What? All right, Hank. We're a PFD. I will guess you. You Google it. How much tamp? A box of tampons. I'm gonna say. Well, now I know they're expensive. I would have said before I knew they were expensive. A box of a dozen tampons costs ten dollars. Is that not true? I don't know. I don't know how much a tampon I don't know. costs. I have no idea. Um, how much is a box of ninety six Tampax Pearl tampons? What, what is how this for? Like a it? sorority house? How much is Guess. it? Ninety six tampons. Forty dollars. Ninety six dollars. That's, That's Costco. One dollar per tampon. Fourteen fifty five. Oh, that sounds like broke as fuck. Wait, yeah. four fourteen dollars? Yeah. Fourteen dollars for ninety six tampons. I think that's a steal. Oh, okay. All right. Here's I'm what. Gonna start, no, I'm going to no. start buying tampons just because they're so cheap. I can't afford not to. Here's here's where my math got a little fucked up. I thought you only used one tampon for the entire period. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So now well, you I can. Get it. Yeah, but now but I get, get now shock. I get how it could be how the money could add up there. Yeah. Because you're just you're just tamponing. How many how many ponds do you think you go through during a cycle? Seven. Well, I thought one. So. I already have my answer. I'm gonna go with seven. Yeah, that was um, really stupid of me. My, I think you have to. Think, yeah, my every guess. Every time you pee. Yeah, every time you poop too, because you, it's from the same oh, hole. Shit. This is next question. Same hole. Well, no, no. I want to dive into it a little bit. I'd rather not. All right. <laughs> hey guys, I just got back together with my ex boyfriend last weekend. We broke up two months ago on a trip to Mexico because I got blackout drunk, went crazy, and then booked a flight home by myself four days early. His friends all hate me now. Any suggestions for how I get back on their good side? I think you got to fuck them. Oh, you man. You got to fuck them all. You pulled... That's that's a baller move. 
Because that's usually that's you'll threaten it. That's a yeah, you'll threaten the... that. Like I'm mm-hmm. going home if you're not nice to me. Mm-hmm. She went home. I had a friend that one time uh, got blackout drunk and woke up in the Bahamas, and he stayed there. Is your friend part of Hangover Three? No, no, he stayed there for okay. like five days. He's like, well, I'm here, so I might as well stick around. <laughs> Uh, I have a friend who got blackout drunk in the uh, Logan Airport and woke up in China. Donnie? <laughs> he lives yeah, there we now. Yeah, know him too. Yeah, yeah, yeah never true. It's true. Uh huh. Yeah, it is true. All right, last one. <laughs> Sup, guys, especially Big Boner Hank. <laughs> My brother came to visit me at college last weekend BBH. and brought home a girl on the air mattress next to my bed while I was sleeping. I told him to leave, and the next morning he said I cock block him. Did I do the right thing? Um, yeah, because technically you would have been having an orgy with your brother mm-hmm. in the same room. Mm-hmm. That's how it counts. So yeah. kudos to you. Yeah. And if you're, uh, oh, it's her younger brother? It's brother. Brother. I assume it's younger. If it's younger brother, it plays older brother, you That's fucked up. That's kind of weird. Yeah. Well, I was going to say it's kind of weird if the older brother brought a girl back with his younger sister. Teacher. Yeah. Wait, are you, are you two twins? Teacher, the way because if you're twins, I've seen, all bets are I've off. I've seen pornos start like this. Yeah, teach the youngins. Ted Cruz loves that kind of shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. Is your is your brother Ted Cruz? Are you Penelope Cruz? I think if you're hot enough too, like if Penelope, if you were Penelope Cruz's brother, you would be okay with like having sex with a girl in front of her. Love I'm gonna stop talking. Talking away.